Hey, welcome back friends. Here we go again at one of our favorite little 55 and over manufacturing communities out here in West Melbourne, Florida. And we're out here because the city came and shut the water off this lady uh, because she got some sort of water leak underneath the house. You've seen me make these repairs before. We're gonna get up underneath the home, find out where it's at, and I'm gonna do a little bit explaining about this type of pipe inside these mobile homes. There's an access panel that there's a few of them around the house we're just going to kind of get this open so we can kind of get our bearings about where this leak might be happening Ooh, wow it looks pretty muddy down there yikes there's at least an inch or two of standing water up underneath here this is not going to be fun i'm going to have to call my shop and have somebody bring some bisqueen clean out here i haven't even turned the water on this lady's been out of town and they came and shut the water off at the meter because of the leak, but there was a lot of standing water underneath here. Crap. All right, so there was a bathroom here and then there's another bathroom on the other side in the very back. And inside of that area is the laundry as well as the water heater. The only thing that's on the other side of the house is the kitchen. So we're going to turn the water on and see if we can see where water is spraying before we do anything. All right, let's watch carefully and see if we see anywhere where water is coming out. <sighs> Partners getting ready to turn the water meter on. This is really going to be a sucky job. I'm listening for it. I don't see or hear any water yet. This water is not from, I think, the leak. I think it's from rainfall. Nothing yet. All right, so my helper says that the water's on and the meter's spinning, but I'm not seeing or hearing anything, and that's not good. That means it's further back than what I thought. God knows if I have to crawl through all that crap. Oh, Lord. Well, I was looking around underneath there for a leak, and I may not have to get up underneath there. I found something else. I'm going to explain to you about this as well, so check this out. See back in there? It's an old irrigation head. When the water was on, that was water just pouring out of that thing over there. It'd be easier to fix. I think there's a shut-off valve right down there. So I'm going to cut that valve off and turn the water back on to see if it stops the meter from running. So I don't know for sure that this is why the city shut the water off or not. As you can see, this is an irrigation system here. Now, this particular mobile home park... Um, when they put these in here, it was okay by the city uh, that they were able to hook up their irrigation system with the city water. Nowadays, because of water shortages and all that other good stuff, they don't allow to do that. But this little community has been grandfathered in. I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna see if I can turn this little valve. It looks like it's stuck. If I can try to get that shut off and turn the water back on, then we'll see if that is what the problem is here. Afraid to touch anything. It seems to be really bad shape. That looks like it's in the off position. Why does the water keep pouring out of here though? The water's pouring steady out of this whole area. So we're gonna have to figure something else out. Not sure yet. Maybe take and cut this or cap it off. I don't even know if this lady uses irrigation anymore or not. So a couple little tests we're gonna run here and figure out what the best way is for us to get this thing repaired and at least ruled out the possibility that this is why the water got shut off. If you watch enough of my videos, we get lucky on a lot of jobs, okay? And partially skill or whatever. I'm hoping we luck out and it's that irrigation head that's leaking, but the only way to do this is I'm gonna cut that old valve out of that old gate valve that's leaking. And I'm going to put another shut off valve, just a regular PVC ball valve in there, let that set up and put it in the off position. And then we'll turn the water back on once that's all set up and everything and see if that stops the meter from running. At that point, if she's still using the irrigation, she's gonna have to call an irrigation specialist, come out and make the repair from there. You see I'm up in this bush and it's pretty tight and everything like that. I wanna show you what I'm talking about with this whole system leaking. Partner's going to turn the water back on, so check it out. Yeah, see that? Water's just pouring right out over there. Out of the top of there and everything. That's enough to run a big water bill up. This is what we want to do. We want to cut that thing out and at least isolate this too. Because I think the water's coming in somewhere, teed off from the meter. And then it goes into this zone 
and feeds the sprinkler system, which I have no idea whether she uses that at all anymore. So he's shutting the water back off. Let's cut that old thing out of there and put something else in. Nice and easy. I don't want to break this thing off in the ground. An old brittle PVC, three quarter inch. Let's get that top. I said this stuff's old brittle PVC. Ooh, that whole thing's coming out. It's on screen from the top. I wanted to try to save that. Tricky business back here in this little bush like this. There she comes. And this little gate valve is in the off position, but there's still a little tiny area down in there where it's letting the water escape through. That's the reason to get this thing out of here. And uh, when I was cutting this off, this thing came loose as well. So we're going to have to take that off and re-thread it back on here. I guess a three-quarter by, looks to be one inch. Possibly, yeah, it's about, a, somebody put a reducer bushing on there. I may have a new one of these, so we might not put that back on. We just redo it the right one. Let's get that water out of there. Three quarter inch PVC. That's what we're working with. And we're not gonna put no brass ball valve or anything because like I said, I don't even know if they use this anymore. I'm just gonna glue a PVC three quarter inch ball valve in there and then bridge this gap here. And just so that we can isolate and turn this thing off. And if she has a problem still, or she uses the irrigation system at that time, I'll have to tell her she needs to get a whole irrigation guy. I just noticed this little line that comes out here that's supposed to, you know, I'm not an irrigation guy, so, you know, don't gripe about it, but that went somewhere here in this system, and you can see it's totally disconnected, so I highly doubt that this uh, irrigation system's working, but I don't want to disable it just in case down the road they want to do that, so we're still going to bridge that gap up to here. Now, here's what I unscrewed. You see, that's one inch, then they reduced it down to three quarter. I've got one of these one inch by three quarter male adapters and we're going to put that thing right up underneath it there. Teflon tape. And remember plastic to plastic, we're not going to put any kind of pipe dope on this so we don't want to split that plastic. I've seen videos of me talking about that. All right, let's kind of get an eyeball of what we need here. Not a lot of wiggle room at all, so we're gonna have to be as tricky as possible without snapping this old plastic. We're gonna have to try to move this a little bit out of the way. Uh oh, a little foible going on here. I push that aside just a touch. There we go, but now we've got to get that and put in there. This is where it gets tricky. Yeah, this is gonna be very tricky because I'm afraid of it snapping back in here to pull that thing up. This moves back and forth a little bit, but it's not a lot of up and down, so <laughs> wish me luck. I'm nervous about breaking this. Not too much, but I am. I don't like breaking things that don't need to be broke. Oh, do you see that? <laughs> we pulled that sucker off and it didn't break. Guess I better buy myself a lotto ticket today. <laughs> I 
think most of the water has been leaking out of this. I think this is an old check valve. It required all these homes to have them when they installed anything came from the water meter. Uh, so that way there's no backflow and contamination go back into the city and stuff. Let's step out here away from bushes. Let me explain something to you plumbers out there when it comes to running into these kind of leaks and repairs. A little tip I'm going to pass on to you plumbers out there. If indeed you happen to run across some sort of a job like this that requires you to make a repair near something that's obviously not being used these days. In fact, who knows if the the customer even knows they have an irrigation system in here because it's all hid back in here and it obviously it's not been working for some time. Don't just cap that thing off or if the customer says, oh, I don't want it, just put it back the way that you found it because it will come back and bite you and they'll be like, oh, and if the time comes and they want to have the irrigation system, you don't want them coming back and saying, oh, the plumber was out here and he capped that all out and now it's coming back to you and you gotta come back and make the repair the second time. Don't push yourself in that kind of situations. The humidity is high, it's before 10 a.m. and that means that we have to allow at least 30 good minutes for that glue to set up before we can turn the water back on. And we don't know yet if there is a leak still up underneath the home. We're just trying to put out the smoking guns at this point. Hopefully this will take care of it. If not, we've got a really, really tough road ahead of us. We've got to crawl underneath there with all that water. <laughs> Now, if you look closely at this old valve that we took out of here, it doesn't really have any play. That's as far as it'll go. And it won't turn or open and close that gate. So this was in the closed, what they thought was closed position, which is telling me that this system hasn't been working in some time, but the water was still passing through because it's not closed all the way. And eventually that little check valve over there that I showed you uh, it failed and that's where water's been pouring out is it enough where it caused that water bill to go up absolutely is it the leak that we're looking for let's hope all right let's take a second let me reiterate what I had mentioned earlier not to uh, repeat myself but most communities these days uh, you're not supposed to, and local municipalities will not allow you to hook your irrigation up to city water just because water shortages, droughts, all that other good stuff. So usually you have to have some sort of a well system or something like that. It all depends on where you live, but here in Florida, uh, that's the way it is with new communities and all that good stuff. Unfortunately, these homes have been in here, most of them, for at least 20, 30 years. And back in the day, that wasn't a regulation for this area where you were allowed to actually hook up your irrigation system to the city water and just paid the bill and all that other good stuff. But this house is, and these communities have been grandfathered in and a lot of these still have old irrigation systems, whether they're working or not, that are still hooked to the city system and people forget about them. Next thing you know, you start having problems. So we're getting ready to turn the water back on. Now, whether that was the initial problem which caused them to shut the water off or not, it was a problem and no matter what happens we're going to keep that valve in the off position and that's not going to get turned back on and if she wants to get the irrigation system fixed she'll have to contact an irrigation specialist at this point my biggest thing is once we turn the water on the meter may run for a little bit to accommodate filling those toilets back up inside but our end goal is to see that meter stop because if it keeps running that means we got another problem and i'm going to have to get up underneath the house and that's going to really suck all right the water is going to be cut on here uh, directly and remember it was pouring water out of here well, we can eliminate that whole problem with that valve as long as our glue is held and stuff we'll keep that in the off position let's cross our fingers and hope that this is the only problem that she has all right the water is on toilets are filled look at that the meter has stopped running the plumbing gods have been with me today because you saw how much water was sitting up underneath this manufactured home and god that would have been this first thing in the morning I'd have to go home and change my clothes and all that stuff. You can see there's always water sitting around these areas, and I'll explain the reason why. Right, so a real quick note when it comes to this particular community. Um, they built this community back in, I believe, the 80s or late 70s, and they dug out a bunch of lakes and stuff, and all that crap that came out of that lake, the old marrow, the clay and stuff, is what they built these foundations uh, and put these homes on and stuff. So even in the wettest time of the year, the driest time of year, there's always water that's sitting around on the ground in here, and that's how all that water got up underneath the trailer there, not as from a leak 
lake but it's because it sits in that grass and it can't drain out anywhere and it just rolls up underneath the trailer and then you start having problems with irrigation so who knows a lot of these places might have leaks on those old lines they don't know about and thus higher water bills hey that's going to do it for this one thanks so much for hanging out and watching the video hope you guys enjoyed and learned something about this um don't just dive into things thinking that automatically there's going to be a leak underneath these manufactured homes so many people own properties and don't know everything there is that can happen when it comes to plumbing it could be right underneath your nose you never even know like i said i asked the lady she'd been living here for three years and didn't know she had an old irrigation system and obviously it hadn't been hooked up in a long time but that indeed was a smoking gun and we were lucky we didn't have to get into all that crap because i would probably end up have to go home and change my clothes there's just no way of getting up underneath there without getting wet got any comments or questions leave them down below and don't forget to keep plumbing